learning because I, I, I can't do it when it just doesn't work. What? What do you mean? Well, you gotta pull up the version that shows you mean the chords? all the chords. You gotta show the chords. It's confusing. It's gotta show all. You gotta yeah. pull up a version that shows all the chords. I had that's why I saw. You know it though. You know that it. something happens in my brain and I forget it. Okay. Yeah, she's doing a lot. <laughs> She's turning 30, folks. She's turning 30. In, in maybe two minutes? <laughs> I can say it. I'm going to say it 10 times. She's 29. 29, 29, 29, 29, 29. Oh, the psych not really. She's 29, 29. I'm not And my boy, he's got COVID. She's 29. He's got COVID. Yeah, but at least I'm not. In the internet, uh, day. Oh, the super spread your party of yeah. year. Mm. 29, I'm glad to leave it all behind. Yeah. Today, when I was sitting at Finelli's Cafe, everyone at the bar, it was their birthday. Someone beside me, they was talking, saying, happy birthday, happy birthday. And then someone else said, oh, it's my birthday too. And then they were saying, huh, Virgo's everywhere. Why is everyone born in September? And it's one else said, uh, it's because they're getting all cozy in the winter. And then someone else was like, it's my birthday too. And I just didn't say nothing to us on my own. And I got kind of shy out of my haircut. And I didn't want to talk. To anyone, it's kind of intimidating in this place. Anyway, eventually, the bomb and he said, Is it your birthday too? And I said, It is tomorrow. And he shouted out to the bar, He said, It's our birthday too. Cry, cry, cry. And I 
had so many bad haircuts, so many bad haircuts, so many bad haircuts. In Seattle, that woman, she made me look like a king. And in Manchester for 10 pounds, that little girl made me wonky bob. <laughs> so many bad haircuts I'll leave in my 20s. And I have a curl number one. No, no, not today. A spooky little number left you. Shirley Temple. Temple. <laughs> you were sad, Shirley Temple. In the winter time, it was New Year, New Skin, baby. Yeah. New, new, skin. New, year skin. new Skin. New Year Skin. New Year New Skin. Wait, 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 Hello, 30s. <laughs> Hello, 30s. I'm not 30, I'm not flirty, and I'm not thriving. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Yes. I'm one out of the three, and it's not. Rudy! Will you let me in? Ah! <laughs> Becca's got a key. Oh, oh my god! I love it! The, the theme is, um, what was it, 70s or 80s? Why are you so fast? I got so many presents. I feel like a little baby. You're on camera. You feel like a little baby? This jacket. I know, this jacket is. Huh? I don't think I've ever, I've ever seen Michael so smart. I know. So what? Smart. You him and Becca that together. Okay. My, my, my dear Helen. I was 20 when we met, and you were just 21. We've been in orbit for our entire 20s. You've grown so much, I can tell, because I haven't grown at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're 30, oh shit. This is your decade. I can't wait for the rest of the world to see how talented you really are. In this decade, you will eclipse everyone. <laughs> your second novel will be optioned by a-Z-Y? A24. A24. With Rebecca attached to direct. <laughs> Scientists will discover that 5G is deeply dangerous and Michael will change his mind, deciding that it is safe. <laughs> <laughs> you
Okay. Yay. 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 as a vegetarian, even though she didn't eat vegetables either. <laughs> I remember Helen at six asking me to tell her the story of her namesake Helen of Troy over and over and over. I remember Helen at seven crying at the gates of Troy because it didn't look like anything as it did in the book. <laughs> I remember Helen at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and onwards being terrified of all masks. <laughs> Especially the Frankenstein masks that her father wore for breakfast every April Fool's Day. And that her older brothers liked to throw into her bed as a joke. And that almost got her father and me reported to social services on account of a story she wrote for school at the age of 12, in which she called the mask Bad Man. And it was only after her highly charged account of walking downstairs some mornings to fight Bad Man for her at the breakfast table, and going to bed some nights to find Bad Man in bed with her, while her older brothers sniggered in the shadows, and only in the last paragraph does she explain that bad man is not a man, but a mask. Um, I remember the day when I came downstairs to find a letter from the headmistress informing me that Helen had been expelled for smoking. I was so furious, but Helen and Pandora couldn't stop laughing, which made me even angrier, until they asked me to read the letter to the end whereupon I noticed the sign off, sexually yours. <laughs> it was that day, and it, it was April. <laughs> I remember Helen and Pantora being mistaken for twins all the time, possibly because I got them into matching outfits, never in pink, until they both rebelled. I remember that in fact they did play like twins, playing shopkeeper or waiter, 
<laughs> or using my bookshelves as, as dollhouses, speaking in heartbreaking voices. Because they knew that I had to work on my computer to make money, and all that I had to do was to enter a lot of words, and then the computer would print out money. <laughs> I remember that whenever photographers came to the house when they were little, to take the picture that the papers wanted to accompany my article. They were absolutely delighted while their older, the older children, Emma, took for the hills. I remember them using the metallic sunshade in my mother's car as an operating table when they were pretending to be surgeons, opening up smokers' lungs and shaking their heads sadly and saying, disgusting. <laughs> I remember them sitting in years and years of restaurants along the Bosphorus in Istanbul, playing cards or drawing, trying to capture the way the colors of the sea changed while the sun set, and sitting together on years and years of flights across Europe, the Atlantic, and across America, chattering away while I wrote the articles that paid for the flights. I remember that Helen was always chosen to play the narrator of the school plays because she was so well-spoken when she really wanted to be the star. <laughs> and that her dream came true in her mid-twenties when she got to play one of the two classicists in Poetic Two, which I had the pleasure of seeing at Piano Fight in San Francisco. And what a brilliant play it was. And how well Helen did that first night, even though she drank a bottle of the other classicist's water. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that it was laced with acid. <laughs> I remember... <laughs> I remember that she did a lot of good acting at home during her teenage years, successfully pretending, when she was back from clubbing, that she wasn't ju drunk, just cold. <laughs> I do not remember, but I know now, that when she snuck out afterwards, She'd get Pandora to hang around it, uh, bang pots and pans in the kitchen at 2 a.m. to make it sound as if the whole gang of girls was there together. <laughs> I remember that during those same years, she seemed most at peace when she was drawing or painting, except when she did the final project, which was a huge portrait of her boyfriend Henry, <laughs> which could have been an illustration of Batman. <laughs> it's still up there in her room, and every time I see it staring at me, glowering and grim, I scream. I remember when she came home for Christmas after her first semester at Manchester Uni, where she was doing American Studies, about which she knew very little, um, despite the fact that both her parents were American. She sat down at the kitchen table, took a deep breath, and announced approvingly, I had no idea how doomed our country was. <laughs> I did say that. I remember Helen at Santa Cruz on Skype, the first chapter of our virtual relationship. I remember the first line of Helen's application for her writing MA in London. I quote, it wasn't until I was working in a failing cheese shop that I came to understand the power of the short story. <laughs> I remember the brilliant short stories that she wrote during that MA, which I loved and will always love, despite the fact that in my every appearance, I have wine-stained teeth. <laughs> Tonight I drank rosé. I remember one of her first assignments, to spend 10 minutes only writing about something, 10 minutes only writing about something she was really good at. She spent most of that day in what we in England call a strop. <laughs> Crying, screaming, agonizing, and almost throwing things at me and Pandora until she slammed the kitchen door behind her and came out 10 minutes later with a brilliant story about the thing she did most excel at, procrastination. <laughs> I remember the lockdown years, the Zoom view of 926 Lincoln Place, the Thanksgivings, Christmases, movie nights, and art nights I got to attend, even though I was home alone many thousands of miles away, and the great gift of getting to stay here in real life at long last, for long enough to witness many dramas at first hand and even to create a few on my own. I remember and will always remember the wind coming in through the window over there and billowing, billowing at while Helen wrapped her arms around them. At a bar in bed not far from where my mother was born, just a week ago, I remember discussing the gap year she and her friends spent in South America, age 17 and 18. They went straight from little, little, pretty, little bath 
to the carnival in Salvador, Brazil. Thinking back to the shock of all that, Helen turned to me and just a bit officially said, I really don't understand why you let us do that. Didn't you realize that we knew nothing? Yes, I did. We all did. I don't believe in God, but I spent that whole year praying to him just in case. The answer to those prayers came with a picture Helen later put on my refrigerator after she came back in one piece. It shows her smiling with Machu Picchu in the background. And even though I now know that she almost fell off Machu Picchu somewhere near the top, I remember what it told me and still tells me that if she could get herself up and down that thing, even shaking with fear, then she could do anything. Happy birthday, darling.
Are you happy in this modern world? No, I'm not. I'm the relief. Or do you need more? Oh, God. <laughs> Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. In all the good times, I find myself longing. Ain't it hard keeping so hardcore? I'm Moving out of Hotel Lemonade's, I never lived here officially. Uh, so, this is. We have tonight, and then we have uh, tomorrow, then we have the next day. 
So I'm gonna do the fridge today. That's why I'm cooking up random shit. And then I'm gonna have a little, <laughs> random space. But I'm not allowed to eat uh, rotten food anymore because I got the crypto parasite. And then the doctors thought I had Crohn's. So I don't have Crohn's. And um, and then Helen, she's looking for my sandals. She's a little ill. We're all a little ill. We're the illest villains in this village. Missing us through 